Hi everyone, this is Daisy again, and I am doing a tutorial for Getting Ready 2. Getting Ready 2 is basically um, children that are five, six year old. So the, that's our target age group um, that would be working on a project such as this. What you're going to have a picture of today is a tiny baby frog that is hoisted itself up on a paradise plant and is stranded. So we're gonna do a good job of getting him all organized here, everyone. So let's get on with it. Start, we're going to put a little frog right here and the rest of the paper is going to be the plant, the paradise plant. So here you go. So you're going to have one curve here and the other curve exactly opposite to it, right there. And then you're going to go ahead and create the eye by making another curve. I know we could have done a circle, but technically you actually need to do it this way. So we have our two eyes. He's kind of thinking right now. So he's got a squint going on. So that means his eyes are like this. He's squinting to kind of say, okay, what should I do next? That's his thought process right there. So if it helps you, what you can do is you can apply the color inside of this. Now I'm going to be changing colors because I don't want a black line all around the body. It, the skin of our frog here is very, very transparent. And so if I make a black line around it, it's going to feel a little awkward. So I'm going to stop using my black pen at this point. And instead, I'm going to bring in a green colored pencil, just like this one. So we are going to touch the top of our eye and we're going to create a curve line down, not all the way, just halfway. Do the same on the other side and go ahead and create a curve to the top. Now, we have his mouth from, you want to touch the bottom of the eye and make a short line that gives us the placing for the mouth so he's that's the outside of his mouth area and I want you to turn it in just give him like a cheek almost can you see that can you see this curve here now when you make the mouth don't make a straight line instead I need you to curve it up like this right there next step we are not going to make anything else for his face or body right now we're gonna to go to his hands so right under this eye, come over here, leave a little cut, tiny gap and make yourself a tiny rainbow, just like this. That's his re left hand. We're going to give three fingers that we can see. So look at what, how you make fingers for a frog. You make one line, two, the middle one being longer and the third being shorter. So short, short, long. Now at the top, make a bobble and then bring it back and turn Go out again, make a bobble. Again, turn. Now, if I'm going at a faster pace than you like, you only need to stop the video, rewind, go back and get your instructions. Second arm from the right, come down, same level right over here. Go ahead and make another little rainbow for his elbow. Just like that, those are his elbows right there. Now, again, we are going to bring down his fingers, one finger, middle one is longer and the outer one is shorter so we have the three fingers now we're going to create a bobble go here create another bobble go down curve to the bottom of the line create a bobble and then go to connect to the elbow he has one leg he's trying to hoist up so we see a knee now here's your right hand see which one i'm going to eyes on the camera go over here to the corner and create the knee. Just another rainbow curve, just like that curve line, everyone. And from the bottom here, make a flat line and connect it up. This is his knee. He's got two toes peeking out, one which is longer and the other which is shorter, like this. For the longer one, create your bobble, just like that, eyes on the camera. Now take the line back down, turn it over, and then another, right there. So you have it, but we want to connect, but I need the line for the flower of paradise. So the flower of paradise has got a red line and I needed to grab a tiny red pencil. 
Here we go. I've got one. It's perfect. So the first line, everybody get your red now. A colored pencil will do really, really well. I need you to connect first the two arms together. So look at this. You're going to touch from here to here. So a straight line, connect, stop. Go to the other side of the left hand and keep on going to the edge of your paper, just like this. Remember, this frog is tiny. He could be about this small on your finger, very, very tiny. So the plant is ginormous. So you gotta remember that. Now, come out from behind the legs over here, everyone. So you're going to have the red of the plant and then you're going to bring your line here. Do you see the plant now? So this is the top edge of the plant and where it connects to the main stem, we have a curve, just like this. And now we're going to transfer back to green. So everyone get your green now. This is my green right here. The bottom of the flower of paradise is green, it's not red. So I am changing color. And then watch, look at the camera, I'm gonna make a curve. But when I go up, I'm going to make it skinny over here. And right from the middle of this curve is where I'm going to create one more green line because the flower opens, right? And so that's the part where it splits. Now let's connect up our frog's body. So this empty space, don't go to the cheek, go under the mouth, first curve in, then curve out. There's your body. On the other side, just a, one single curve right there. So there you have it. That's our little, little frog. That's one petal for our flower paradise. Switch back over to your red. This is a curve and let the stem of the plant come up here, one. And from this side, let it come out, one. So you're making big curves. Look at how big my curves are. They're not small, right? So wherever the curve pushes in, this is where you can anchor a petal. But let's make the second line, everyone. So remember that our frog is very tiny. Well, how do you show tiny and the size of something? It is always in comparison to. So the flower is so big that the frog, frog will feel tiny now. So let's finish off our other petals. Here we go, everyone. This was petal one. Do you see the dip here? You wanna get that dip and you're going to go out, going to go out. Let's dip two. You see the dip here? You're gonna come into this one and you're going to create another petal, just like this. And the bottom of this one, I can see, so I am going to take time to make sure that I create the curve, just like that one up there. Eyes on the camera, everyone. Let's keep going. There you go. So you've got one petal, two petal, three, and I wanna be able to put one on top over here. So what we're going to do is, we are going to create, right from this point, a curve line. And notice I do not go outside of the left side of the stem, I stop. Over here, I'm going to open a second petal, connected right there. And under this first curve, I'm opening a third petal. So this is my biggest flower on top. And I let the stem go up and connect to it. So that's our entire picture right there, drawn. Now it's time for our colors. This is a combination of color pencils and markers, but you can stick with only color pencils if you prefer. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, our little guy is very transparent. He's a baby. So you're going to start with the cream color and you're going to add in the cream in the entire body. These, um, if you get the opportunity and if it's available, sometimes you get some really cool discounts on Amazon for Prisma pencils. I mean, just recently I was able to get a bulk order and they gave me a fantastic rate on them. But I do like Prismas more than I like most other pencils uh, because they have a higher wax content. That wax content in the pencil literally will mix and blend to give you new colors. Now notice 
I'm only applying the cream to the right side, the left side of the frog's body, not the right. The right is darker, so I'm going to only apply my cream to under lip and here. That's it. Next color is going to be our yellow. So we're going to add in the yellow, just not everywhere in certain parts. So I don't add it on the, the top part of the hand or the knee. I let that stay very transparent and I just add it on the lower parts of all those areas. Do you see that? So this part is still very, very um, lighter compared to the others. I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow around the eyes because I do see some of it over here and on this on the left side of the frog's face. I prefer to use the color pencils because it gives me the capacity to blend and to really control color. So whenever you're doing an art and you want a really uh, be able to control colors, well, you're definitely rooting for doing um, color pencils. I would say that very easily. Now, create a darkness under the eye. Create a darkness under the eye, but not all around, right? Now, create a darkness right here on the lip. but not all around. So I made, notice I left it lighter at the top, right over here and on under the lip. Now over here again, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing in some green with the yellows. And I'm going to go ahead and give the rest of the body some greens. Push a little bit harder everyone on that pencil because if you push a little harder, you get a rendering like the one you're seeing in my camera, just like that. This hand is covered by the frog shadow. So only the actual hand itself, but not the toes, <sighs> not the little tips of his fingers. I'm not gonna work on those. I'm only gonna work on the lower part. I see a little uh, peach color on the eyelid. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that right there and right here. I'm going to get my black to give myself a little bit more of an interest in the eye and reinforce the line I first made right there. And then we're going to go back in with my last color, which is a bit of a darker color, but I'll only do it right here. So whenever you change colors, you don't, you're not supposed to go do it on the entirety of the project. You have to pick and choose. So you're looking for lights and darks, everyone. That's how you kind of go for uh, what you need in terms of the color variations and things like that. You're only looking for lights and darks. That's it. I'm going to give the, the edge of the fingers a little bit of a peach color just for interest. Because remember I told you his, he's very, very transparent. Now, look at the way my eyes look. They look like they're flat. They don't have any depth. And the reason for that is I didn't give shadow. So take your black and look at me, look at the camera very lightly. Just put in a little bit, very light, lowest pressure you can, as if you were about to catch a butterfly with your hand, low, low pressure. And the butterfly shouldn't get crushed by the fingers that you're gonna catch it with. You have to be very, very gentle with this thing. And there you go. This helps give a little bit of a roundness on our frog's eye and the way that the eye sockets are. And I think it wouldn't hurt our little frog to have a tiny bit of color here. Not every bit, just a tiny bit. That does it for my frog. So the frog is complete, but now comes my um, a plant. So I'm going to move over to markers because the plant is way bigger and I want to be able to start again lightest colors. I'm not the bottom of the plant. We talked about this is green, but I'm not going to start with a green. I'm going to get me a cream color and I'm going to put that in here and I find all the areas. So whenever I've opened up my colors, I try to go to all the parts that are needed by the color. 
just like that. Next color will be the actual green. And so we are going, before we do that, let's do the paler color for our the top of our plant. It is not a red, it's kind of pinkish. So we're going to start up here. And remember to trace your outlines really nicely. If you want a good picture, then you have to work at it. It's not a race. You don't do art as a race ever. You do art for yourself. It's soothing. It's really good to do art. Any given time, take, take a pencil, take a few colors and just create. I like supplementing my uh, markers with my colored pencils. So when I do markers, it's good. But at the same time, I like to supplement with my colored pencils. So that's the color I gave it on the top over there, everyone. Now I'm going to add the similar color down here. I like to change colors and draw because when I do that, I'm able to um, keep a color that will complement my um, flower itself. Next color to go a little bit one tone darker is gonna be this guy here. And we're not gonna go from the top, we are going to go from down here. We still have one more color to go. So even if you're doing markers, now if you have Crayola markers at home and you're working with those, it still works really well. And let me explain. So what you wanna do is you want to put multiple layers of a color type 
on the uh, composition. So for example, if you want to make your pink darker, well, you put maybe three or four layers of that pink on so that it can start looking darker. That's all it is. So the Crayolas work in the system of layers and they do a very good job. There's nothing wrong with the work that they do. So please don't think that, well, we don't have the colors that Miss Daisy might be using on the um, a video. That is not the point. The point is to give you an instructed art lesson and also tell you that whatever you have at your house is perfect. It is not a problem. So we've got this much of color now on here. Now comes my darkest color in the pink. And the darkest color of the pink is only going to go in the middle, believe it or not. It's not even going to go to the bottom. So you don't want to cover up all of your medium color at all. You want to instead make it like this. Right there. And then we are going to add So you have all of this. Again, now it's time for you to pick up a gray. One of the best colors in gray is your cool gray. So what that means is, I need to show a little bit of darkness, but I don't want to alter the color. So gray is what you need to get. Uh, just look for in, in your box and you will most surely find it there. There. That's all you have to do to wherever you see shadows. If you want it darker, remember what I told you, layers. So you add more than one coat of that color and you will get darker. It's not about going and finding out the perfect color in the market, that's not at all it. And then you want to have some gray coming in right in here. Make it disappear. So just add a little bit extra line there. So it's thicker down here, skinnier up there. And that's what you need. So this is all that you're expected to do for in terms of your actual frog and the flower. Now you want to get yourself some paint. So we are looking for a dark green background. If you don't have a dark green, you can make some. So the way you do it is a tiny dot of black, more of the green, and you will, voila, you have a dark green. You should always be able to work within your means to creating some interesting composition. And I've got, what I have here with me is watercolors. So, but I'm going to go ahead and use them all the same. And I'm going to put my water here so that I can get in with the colors. When you do a background, even if you've done it with markers, doesn't stop you from using watercolors to create an interesting backdrop. Now I am painting this, but I like to get this more darker. So after I paint a certain value of it, 
I'm going to go ahead and add on a little bit of black. Maybe some blue. When you are working with tropical animals, the background is typically like a rainforest. It's dark, it's greens, it's blacks, it's all kinds of colors. You can get away with using a variety of different colors that will look really fantastical. I like colors not to be consistent. I don't want a block color. But if let's say that you wanted to get a more uh, pop art kind of a finish, that means block colors. Well, in that situation, you really do have to get the right color type that will not come out patchy. And if you have a question about that, you can uh, please write it in the box below and I will get you the information that you need for that those kinds of colors and where to get them and what to do with them but for right now we're going to focus in on being watercolors and being uh, all ranges and the last one right here Remember, make sure if your fingers get any paint on it, you don't want that on your um, really nice composition. After all, you've only spent the last so many minutes working on it. And so please clean your hands. Check your hands yourself. Uh, be responsible because it's hard to fix things. Prevention is better than cure. So make sure you cover areas that you don't want your... Um, picture to get contaminated with, cover that, make sure that you're happy with what you get, things like that. Basic concepts of art and basic etiquettes when you do art. The color pencil will not let the color sit on top if you're working with um, watercolors or any skinny up paint. It, because of the wax content in the pencil color itself, it will repel the color. So it's like a protective barrier almost. That's why we do the pencil colors first, not later. So that way when we do color down, uh, we just have to get the whole thing done. Okay, all done. This is our project of a tropical frog on a paradise flower, everyone. Please remember, rewind as many times as you need to get the right um, uh, lesson to move it at the pace that you want to move it. This is not supposed to be hard for you. This is supposed to make it more achievable. So look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Be safe. See you then. Bye.